Amazing how a change of 10 degrees from 95 every day to 85 today, down all the way down to 70, 72 at night, makes all the difference in the world. I feel much better. I'm going to talk a little bit about another series I've dived into, for I've dove into, I have delved into for Garb, Garb August. Uh, the Larry Kent crime series. Um, I have seven of these things. Um, and I've read two, so I'll, I'll discuss those two briefly, and then I'll, I'm going to keep reading them, I think, if it'll open up. Here's a better picture of one. What I like about these, I'll go into the background of them a little bit in a minute. Uh, Larry Kent is a private eye in New York City in roughly the 1950s, I think, at least the ones I've read. Uh, you notice, as in, say, the Ellery Queen series, there is no separate author credited. Larry Kent is an Australian series. Let me see if I can get to this. There's a little bit of uh, information about this. So uh, Larry Kent started his life as a hero of a half-hour radio show on Australia's, Australia's Macquarie Network and was inspired chiefly by the success of Hard Boiled Mysteries of Carter Brown, which I haven't read. I haven't read the Carter Brown books. These are, you know, in the vein of like, uh, you know, based on what I've read before of like uh, Mike Hammer or something like that. He's, he's a tough guy, New York private eye, first person narrator, as I mentioned, very short books, about 100 pages, so it's really helping me out on my challenge here. Uh, I'm getting close to the end of the 100 book challenge. Anyway, so the, the radio show is very popular. The Cleveland Publishing Party Limited Group of Australia decided to publish a series of novels. Now, it's interesting, in the, in the radio series, he was an Australian character. Set and it was set in uh, Australia. And so they published this series of novels about a character with the same name, the same type of character, but an American in New York City. And you know, people didn't seem to have much of a problem with that because there were at least 400 of these uh, published, and I think even more than that. Because here's a hilarious statistic. Uh, Here's one of the covers. This is one of the ones I haven't read, but it's a pretty representative cover. Well, can you see what it says there? Probably not. It says, Piccadilly Publishing, and, and there's a quote, a blurb here, meant to sell the book. And this is the blurb. The longest-running detective series in history, according to shotsmag.co.uk. Wow, what a ringing endorsement. <laughs> nothing about the quality, nothing about the action or anything. Just, you know, one thing about this series, there sure are a lot of them. I think there's a lot more than 400. Uh, all, all this this uh, marketing material says well over 400, but these have numbers on them. The one, This one right here is Larry Kent, number 798, Terror Below by Don Herring. Oh, Don Herring. Okay, there's a name of a guy. Oh, now I have to look at each one. Okay, no, I don't want to do that because I have a theory about the authors and I want to uh, pretend it's real and it might not be if I if I actually look and see that individual authors are credited on, on different books. Anyway, so this publishing group in Australia decides the, to base a character series on the radio show even though they're setting it in a different country than the radio show and they hire two authors to do it. Uh, Don Herring, an American who lived in Australia, and Des R. Dunn, a Queenslander, uh, and, uh, the native Australian, in other words, are primarily primarily associated with the series. Between 1954 and 1983, Larry appeared in well over 400 adventures. Larry Kent is a typical hard-boiled private eye. He smokes Luckies, drinks whiskey, and within the first dozen pages or so, is usually met. He, he usually met a dame and is fighting for his life. The mean streets are pure in New York, although radio series was set in Australia, blah, 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 and include Harlem nightclubs and Jersey roadhouses. Generally, the body counts are high, about six deaths per novel. It's awfully specific. I, it seems to be that, seems to me, if, if the way they put it there, that must have been a uh, an editorial requirement 
which is one six deaths. One of the ones I read had six chapters, so maybe it's like one death per chapter. But there's another side to Larry Kent. He's a Vietnam War veteran. Interesting, since this theory started in the early 50s, he used to work for the CIA and still does, usually reluctantly on occasion. So sometimes they would move into spy plots, you know, probably depending on what was popular. You know, in each decade it was published. Maybe if I, maybe if there's a James Bond movie coming out, they would do more CIA plots or whatnot. And once, when an attempt was made on his life, the agency paid for him to have plastic surgery that altered his appearance, something he never quite managed to get used to. So I, I didn't read any of those. The ones I've read are basically in the 50s and games and nightclubs and thugs and fist fights and stuff like that. Larry Kent is fast and fun, and Piccadilly Publishing is proud to be bringing his cases to a whole new generation of fans, complete with their original good girl artwork. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about, too, because as I've talked about in some of the other series I've been reading for... Let's see if I can get back to some of the other covers. Some like the M Malzberg series I was reading, uh, the Lone Wolf series, and there's a couple others I've got where they've where these small publishers that are reissuing these old paperbacks, paperbacks as cheap ebooks, and these are very cheap. I believe these are a buck fifty each. Um, you know, they put really crappy covers on them, or just really sort of generic covers. You know, they got to save money where they can. It's really not like a high profit enterprise reissuing these old books. Here's another one: the Heavenly Bodies. Um, but it's more fun when they've got the original covers. I don't know. It really shouldn't make that much of a difference. That was number 465. So the two that I read were uh, Honey Blonde Blues. They're all cheesecake covers. They've also all got this reminder that it's the longest running series in history. Anyway, Honey Blonde Blues! Exclamation mark. Pretty good book. Very action oriented. It's number number 540 now this is the 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 and this one's by don herring um that's the lowest number in any of the ones i've bought so i don't know if these numbers correspond to the actual print history there's the only copyright is the current as the kindle edition uh july 2019 is when they start bringing these out there's no uh no indication of when each original one was was uh, printed, but it makes it more fun to have the the original trashy covers. I don't know, just psychologically, I guess. But who knows who owns these things? Sometimes it's the individual writers. Sometimes it's some publishing group. Like I said, there was two writers here. There's that guy Don Herring I just mentioned. Then the second one I read and. It doesn't really say in that little... Yeah, okay, good, I'm right, okay. The second one I read, One More for the Road, is by Des R. Dunn. All right, I guess I'm glad I noticed that now. Here's the cover. It's one of the better covers. I don't know if that's Larry Kent or if it's just some wastrel that Larry Kent has to... who to uh, fight off, you know to help this femme fatale who's obviously in, in trouble here. Guy doesn't seem very upset that she's got a gun on him, so maybe he is the, the hero, although he's got a sweater vest on, so I don't know what that means. And I just read this book. Uh, so my supposition, it doesn't really say, you know, that they how they wrote these books, the two authors that are mainly, that it says are mainly credited with the mainly associated with the series and my assumption immediately after reading the two that I read that I picked at random was that they did not collaborate on them that they alternated because they are very very different in style the first one I read the blondes was all action uh, the second one I've read one more for the road by Desar Dunn the one I just showed the cover of uh, much more stylish, much uh, more character driven, uh, more humor in in the in the narration, in the narrative voice of Larry Kent. 
uh, uh, very snappy dialogue and things like that. So a little more fun to read. I don't know. Maybe I'll make a different conclusion after I've read more of them. I'll probably read a few more of them. Anyway, they're only 100 pages long, uh, which is very nice for my wretched 100 book challenge. So I've read Honey Blonde Blues and One More for the Road, which brings me up to 91 books in the 100 book challenge. And I've got five more of these. If I read these, one, two, three, four. I'll be almost done. I don't know if I'll read them straight through. i got some other stuff to read. That's Larry Kent, another addition to the Garbology, the Garb August pantheon of trashy forgotten pulp heroes, or, or pulp, later pulp heroes. Quite enjoyed, particularly quite enjoyed One More for the Road, uh, although they're both uh, good and fun. That's it for today.